symbol for crisis is made up of two parts, danger and opportunity. The greatest danger that we face as a species is ruining our planet's capacity to create new life. The reason in part is because of the economic systems that we have created that take natural resources and create pollution and waste in the process. The opportunity is that our path to a bright and infinite future may just be based on fixing up the planet and creating healthy and happy, vibrant lives for everyone. Let's take a look at the economics just a little bit more. Currently our model is based on taking natural resources, manufacturing both worthwhile and meaningless things, and creating a tremendous amount of pollution and waste in the process. The result is that we're overtaxing the Earth's ability to replenish itself by 40% every day. This simply cannot go on forever. Um, so, think of it like this. Imagine that I have given you a million dollars, and I promise that for that million dollars, I will give you $100,000 in interest every single year, forever. All you need to do is not spend the million dollars. And if you're clever, creative, and thoughtful, this 100,000 a year is enough for you, all your friends, and actually all of humanity to live happy, healthy lives. But as time goes on, you invite more and more people to the party and buy more and more things. And pretty soon your spending is up to 140,000 every year. When I explained this to my 13-year-old daughter, she understood pretty well that that couldn't go on forever. So unfortunately for her, our spending is going up year over year instead of going down. This can lead to a sense of despair. I think most of us on some level understand that our current behavior doesn't provide a promising, bright, and optimistic future for, for future generations. And part of the problem is that green consumerism has been focused on uh, this basic premise that we need to conserve. We need to be less bad. You're a human being, you consume, therefore you're bad. You're in business, even worse. You should be less bad. And don't you know that your bad behavior is having a negative impact on the polar bears? And then we feel bad for the polar bears, but we don't really know what to do about it. So we go out and we buy a canvas shopping bag, all the while realizing that what we're doing isn't really quite enough. The green... <laughs> Green consumerism is kind of like this. You know, there are bigger problems at hand, and, and this guy's saying, do you want paper or plastic? Well, is that really the issue that needs to be addressed? It's kind of like, you want to go lay on the beach in Mexico, but you're driving 100 miles an hour towards Canada. Well, slowing down to 60 doesn't get you any closer to Canada. So let's talk about what it might take to turn the other direction. I believe that our path to a bright and infinite future isn't about being less bad. Our path to a bright and infinite future might just be about being really, really good. And it might just be about restoring the capital that's been depleted and improving the human condition in the meantime. We'll look at an example. Let's just take a simple example of riding your bicycle or walking. That may seem like a less bad thing to do, right? You're not driving your car. But you're also getting exercise, breathing fresh air, and those things make you stronger, more resilient. They also make you happier and healthier. You may be a more pleasant person to be around if you've taken the time to exercise from point A to point B. You, so by doing this, you have not only saved yourself money on gas, you have also given the atmosphere a break, you've improved your resiliency and your life expectancy, and you're probably a better parent, or a better employee, or person to be around because you've had some good mental space. So that's a solution that has multiple benefits, right? For your small investment of time and a bicycle or a pair of shoes, you've all of a sudden created more wealth than you had when you started. This is an example of uh, tagging transformer boxes. It's a problem in Fort Collins, it's a problem in many cities. And the, um, 
you know, the folks from the city would have to go around and repaint these, and then the taggers would come back and tag them again. And this could have gone on forever as an endless cycle of tagging and painting and tagging and painting. The solution? Artists. Artists are always looking for a good place to display their work and for a little bit of pay to do their thing, right? So by bringing in artists to paint the transformer boxes, you've brightened the community, added beauty, health, and well-being to our general collective goodness or sense of, of well-being, and you save the city time and money and paint by having to go around and, uh, and paint these things all the time. So that's a solution where it meets multiple needs and multiple benefits. By investing in the artists and by investing in the beauty, we're able to solve multiple problems at one time. So this is kind of what I'm talking about here, is it's this infinite loop of investment and return. What are we getting for the time, intelligence, and resources that we're investing? We need to measure the health, happiness, and capacity that come out of those things. I'll give you one more example. At Ford Motor Company, they were facing uh, surrounding fines with the runoff from their roofs and their parking lots. The first solution was a $50 million chemically-based water treatment facility. Oops. That obviously wasn't the solution that was chosen, or I probably wouldn't be telling you the story right now. The solution was a green roof and other nature-inspired ways to infiltrate water and treat contaminants. The solution cost $15 million, so it's a $35 million savings. Creates beauty, insulates their building, and, uh, and treats the water for far less money. That was a really good return on their investment. So the way that we start to restore capital is by increasing our wealth. Wealth not just in financial terms, but also wealth of the Earth's capacity to generate life and also of the capacity of people to live happy, healthy lives. So that is true wealth creation. So I would ask each of you to think about or to join me in this pursuit of genuine wealth creation. How is it that you are investing in your life, in your work, and in your community? Does the payoff exceed the investment? It's not Rob Peter to pay Paul. We can't just take natural resources and turn them into financial capital and never put it back in the system because that's that linear trajectory that doesn't have a very happy ending. The happy ending, or the happy journey, is about continuing an infinite ability to invest our time, intelligence, and resources in creating more capacity, more happiness, and more well-being. So please join me in that process. Thank you. Thank you.